some fan did this blood curdling scream as she walked past and it picked up on her microphone. <laughs> Just shut up. Let's talk about the Eras tour. And that is the last time I'm going to say that because with my accent, it's actually the Eras tour. I rarely hear people say that. But anyways, if you are living under a rock, I'm talking about Taylor Swift's sold out stadium worldwide tour. This tour started on the 17th of March, 2023 and doesn't end until the 8th of December, 2024. That's like a year and eight months. This tour consists of 152 shows, 46 songs, and it goes for three hours. I remember when it first came out that Taylor was doing three hour shows and everyone was freaking out about it. Surely she's not the first one who has done this, right? Selling out these massive stadiums and with merch and VIP packages, it's crazy to think that she's only made a million dollars. Ah! <laughs> The tour's not even over yet, and she has already made over a billion dollars. A billion! Her previous tour of Reputation only made 345 million. I'm saying that like it's nothing. <laughs> but it is. It is compared to the Eras tour. Oh yeah, the movie version of the Eras tour made 267 million dollars. Once the hype died down a little bit with the movie, I actually went and saw it by myself in gold class. No one else was in the cinema, just me and my cheeros. <laughs> I'm glad I went when I did because I remember when it first came out, girls were having full concerts in the cinema. I don't want to be a part of that. Something sweet that Taylor has already given to hundreds of her staff are crazy bonuses. Like I'm talking 84 million worth. Her biggest show out of her whole tour was 96,000 people at the MCG Melbourne. Crazy. Some of you may know that I made a video ranking Taylor Swift songs a while back. Essentially, I was a big Swifty as a kid, and then when she changed to pop music, I fell out of love with that. And then I came back with the whole COVID and acoustic music. It was great. I definitely made some people angry with my strong opinions in that video. Stay, stay, stay. Most annoying song, I don't like repetitive songs, and this album unfortunately had a lot of that. For the most part, I think her music is alright. There is just a really good handful that I want to skip. Like these songs. Now, why am I talking about the Euros tour? I actually went to it, but not in Australia. Look, when I say I tried my hardest to get tickets in Australia, I didn't really. I think this is how it played out in America as well. I could be wrong, but it was really like a free for all to even get one ticket. It's so bizarre to think that these stadiums hold 90,000 people, but it is impossible to get even one seat. So yeah, I missed out on tickets for the Australian shows and I wasn't really upset about it. If it happens, it happens. And then shortly after this, I was talking to one of my friends that live in the UK about how I missed out on tickets. At this point in time, tickets weren't available for the UK yet. And from what I heard, it was a completely different system of getting the tickets. Like you had to get a code and then wait and then pick your seat. I wish Australia was like that. So we were joking around like, ha ha ha, imagine if I came to the UK to see Taylor Swift. Ha ha ha. <laughs> and then it was a reality. The day of my concert, my friend and I went to the VA Songbook exhibition. Basically, it was just a trip down memory lane of all her famous outfits during the eras. No one was in the Speak Now section. I have a bone to pick. So let's talk about my Eras tour experience. So I flew from Australia to London. It took me 23 hours. I had a lot of food, here's some pictures, and I had a lot of sleeps. I have no pictures of that. And this was my first time flying by myself. And it was really good because I was sitting on the window seat and for both my flights, no one was sitting in the middle. It was great. The only thing I can fault about the experience going over there was that after our stopover in Singapore, we all got on the plane and it got delayed for like an hour because there was a missing family in the Singapore airport. Like, you know your plane is leaving. Where are you? I was so tired. I was watching up to try and stay awake and I couldn't. 
I physically couldn't. So I passed out on the plane before we even went into the air. And then when I woke up, I'm like, oh my God, we're in the air. Your girl was exhausted. Sorry, I just had to add that little detail in because I'm still bitter about it. But moving on with the concert, we went to Night 6 London with the 92,000 people. My friend managed to score some pretty good seats that were bang on in the middle. And the seats themselves, they had more cushion to them compared to the other seats. So I guess that's pretty cool. So what did I dress up for the Eras tour? My friend dressed up as fearless and well, I wasn't organized. I didn't bring a costume. I just wore something I brought over and I went to Poundland and found some one pound ivy and just wrapped it around myself. What a creative costume. I love the song Ivy. Surely no one else is gonna do this. Well, I guess I'm not the only one because I saw so many Poundland Ivies. I didn't bring any friendship bracelets, but someone was nice enough to give me some. I got a Speak Now one and a Call It What You Want. Now, what can I say about the show? It's like every other show. <laughs> Another reason why I wanted to see the Eras tour over there compared to Australia was because of the opening act, Paramore. I've been listening to Paramore for the longest time, so it was so good to finally see them. And I probably will again, to be honest, sometime. But yeah, sorry, Sabrina. You got nothing. Overall, the concert was amazing. The production, the outfits, the energy. It was such a vibe. Now, let me talk about some niche things that happened at my concert. The most notable one was witnessing a blood-curdling scream that played throughout the whole stadium. That was kind of terrifying. And this happened during one of the slower, sadder songs of the night, Marjorie. So when Taylor was in her feelings talking about her deceased grandmother, some fan did this blood curdling scream as she walked past and it picked up on her microphone. I understand people being fans of her, but if you're doing a blood curdling scream right at her face, just shut up. You could just see the whole arena shift in mood when this happened, especially after the warnings from a previous show. I'll be honest, it was uncalled for. Because everyone gets lit for the surprise songs, let's talk about it. I was really hoping for something from Speak Now or even Fearless, something for nostalgia, but that didn't happen. She came out with a guitar and she was talking about playing a song that she's never played before. With all the reputation Taylor's version hype going on, I looked at my friend and said, she's gonna play I Did Something Bad. And then she did. She did and everyone lost it. Everyone thought that she was saving that song for when she released Reputation, but I guess it's not the case this time, but I'm glad I got to experience it. Look at it, the whole stadium was green. I love green. And on the piano, she did a mashup of My Boy Only Breaks His Favorite Toys and Coney Island. I was a bit excited for Coney Island. It was actually kind of funny. On the way to the concert, my friend said that she didn't like the My Boy song, and then she played it. I think I would have actually flipped a table if my surprise songs were either Stay, 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 Paper Rings or London Boy. Another thing with the surprise songs, the show before mine Ed Sheeran performed at. I'm not mad I missed that. <laughs> Sorry, Ed. But also the day after my concert, she played like my favorite nostalgic songs for the surprise songs. Long live and change. Now for leaving the concert. So after the concert, we caught the tube from Wembley. It was just a little busy. We stayed for the last song, Karma, saw the fireworks, and as soon as they started to do their bows, we bolted. I'm typically a slow walker, but at that very moment, I was on a mission. There were already thousands of other people leaving the stadium, and with our efforts, we got to beat a lot of the crowd and only waited in queue for like, 15 minutes? The people controlling the crowds, one of them was playing Taylor Swift songs out of a megaphone. <laughs> You can just imagine a very big clump of people awkwardly singing Shake It Off. That was a weird experience. <laughs> Here is my opinion on the set list. To be honest, it's actually not really that bad. Um, it just doesn't cover debut, but I don't think anyone really wants debut. I think she read the room. Starting off the show with Lover, I think was a pretty good idea. One, because it's my least favorite era. <laughs> 
<laughs> get that out of the way. And two, she hasn't really had a chance to perform these. The Heartbreak Prince song is a good opening, I guess, with the long time coming. And then it goes into Cruel Summer, which that gets everyone hyped. With the new leg of the tour, I didn't see The Archer, but honestly, I'm not mad about that at all. Fearless, I think, is good. It's sweet and short with Fearless, You Belong With Me, and Love Story. Just get them out of the way and keep moving on. Oh, and I also like, because there's so many songs, she had to, like, cut verses and stuff out of them. Which I think it was good, it makes it less boring. The Evermore and Folklore section was probably what I was most excited to see, and it was a great mix of songs. The only ones I didn't get to see was Tolerated, The One, and The Last Great American Dynasty. Dynasty? Dynasty? During Willow, I got to see some of the viral floating orbs in the stadium. For Reputation, I think the songs in the set list are pretty good. They kind of cover everything. I know there's no getaway car in it, but... Do we really need it? I, I'm i sorry if that is your favorite song. And we speak now, it's only Enchanted, which that's okay, I guess. I know it's not really a popular album, but there's some bangers on there, okay? Oh yeah, and the fact that Long Live got cut before I got to see it, oh, heartbreaking. In the red set, I definitely think the all too well 10 minute version was probably one of the best songs performed of the night, especially when all the little like snowflakes and stuff started falling down. Mwah! 1989, I think it was a good selection of songs that everybody knows. Shake It Off was not my favorite. I also got to witness the crowd do London <laughs> during blank space. Um, it wasn't really strong compared to Sydney. Sydney's just on a whole nother level. The songs for the Tortured Poet Department were all right. They weren't too bad. I think maybe Down Bad could have been off the list. And also the crowd went crazy thinking Post Malone was going to come out. It was just one of her backup dances. And with the end of the concert, it's done with Midnight's. And to be honest, all the songs in the list, I approve. Anyways, I think that's enough of me yapping. If you've been to the Eras Tour, let me know in the comments below and tell me what your surprise songs were. I'd love to know. Thanks for watching and catch you later, Wobbly Boys.